We've previously studied the theory of the efficient frontier to construct a portfolio. Today, I build an efficient frontier from scratch in Excel. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Let's first get a quick overview of the process so that you can more easily follow what I'm doing in Excel. Those of you that have seen previous episodes will recognize this chart. The red points on the chart here represent individual assets plotted with their individual levels of risk on the x-axis, and that's measured by standard deviation of returns, and then the expected return on the y-axis. And as you can see here from the green curve, which is termed the minimum variance frontier, this shows other possible levels of risk and return that are possible by constructing this portfolio with different weightings. And the point in blue here at the very left is what's known as the global minimum variance portfolio. And this represents the minimum level of risk that is possible to achieve with these four assets. Now, the construction of this green curve is achieved by doing something called a minimum variance optimization. And that's the process that we will go through in a moment in Excel. But just before we do, it's worth mentioning what's called the efficient frontier. Now, the efficient frontier starts from the global minimum variance portfolio and then heads upwards on the curve. And this represents the various weightings for your portfolio that you're going to want to choose. And we've covered why that's the case in previous episodes. So make sure you take a look at those if this isn't clear. So now let's get into Excel, perform this minimum variance optimization to create this green curve, the minimum variance frontier. Now to create this, I'm going to use just two stocks. The first one is Cisco Systems and the second one is Pfizer. In the future, I will show this calculation for more assets, but for now, let's keep it simple. So all I have as a starting point are the close prices on a daily basis for each of these two assets. Now you can perform these calculations using a larger time frame, such as monthly closing prices. My only reason for choosing daily values is that I'm a day trader, and typically that's the time frame I use for this type of analysis. Now, before we can do anything, we need to calculate what are called in this time frame the daily returns. But as I said, if you're using monthly data, then these will be the monthly returns. And we need to do that individually for each asset. So that's very simple. It's just the current value divided by the previous value minus one. And then we can send that all the way to the bottom of our data. And then to do the same for Pfizer, we can just copy that calculation and just double check that it's using the right values, which it is. Now I've chosen to use a full year's worth of data, but of course you can use less or more as you see fit. But the first thing we need to do is to calculate the standard deviations of the daily returns for each of these and the expected return for each of these. So effectively, these will represent the red points on the chart that we saw in the example a moment ago. Now we can use inbuilt Excel functions in order to do this very quickly. And so we're going to do the standard deviation of a sample and the sample we're going to use are the daily returns. And we can again, just copy that across to Pfizer. And then in terms of the daily expected returns, this is just the average of the individual returns here. So again, we can just use the average function
and once again copy that across. So with that done for the individual stocks, we can now turn our attention to the metrics associated with the portfolio as a whole. And as I said in the introduction, we go through a process which is called a minimum variance optimization. And what that does is consider different constructions of the portfolio, so different weights for each of these assets. So you can see here, I've got a list of different options ranging from 100% in Pfizer all the way down to 100% in Cisco and everything in between in increments of 5%. So these all obviously add up to 100%. And so we're going to look at the different values for the portfolio standard deviation and the portfolio expected return for each of these combinations, which we can then plot and start to consider which is the best construction. So let's concentrate first on the portfolio standard deviation. Now, if you remember from previous episodes, this is the formula for the sigma of the portfolio or the standard deviation. And currently we have all of these values. We have our weightings. We have our standard deviation values. What we don't have is this term here, which is rho, which represents the correlation between the two assets. So we can very quickly calculate that. And again, we're going to make use of a built-in function called corral. And we want the correlation of the daily returns of Cisco versus those of Pfizer. And so you can see we have a correlation of 0.187. So these two assets are relatively uncorrelated. There's a slight correlation there, but it's not very high. And so these are actually ideal candidates to form part of a portfolio because of that low level of correlation. So with that calculated, we now have everything we need in order to calculate the portfolio standard deviation. So we'll do that first for the top one here. So first of all, all of the terms are in a square root. And then we have weight one squared multiplied by the standard deviation squared, which is this value to the power two multiplied by this value. And I'm going to lock this value so that when we drag the values down, it's always going to use this. And again, we're going to square that plus the weight of Pfizer, which is J254 squared multiplied by the standard deviation of returns, which again, I'm locking and raising to the power two. And so that's now the first two terms here complete. So we move on to the third term, which is this one, which is two multiplied by sal I254 and J254, which are the two weights, multiplied by the correlation coefficient, which is this. And again, I'm going to lock that value, multiplied by the standard deviation again, which I'll lock, and the standard deviation of Pfizer, which I'll lock. Close the bracket. And that gives us our value. Now we can just take that all the way down. And there's a quick sanity check we can do here to make sure that we've done the calculation correctly. So in this top portfolio where we have 100% in Pfizer, the value we get here for the standard deviations should be the same as the standard deviation of Pfizer itself, which you can see it is. And likewise in the portfolio at the bottom here, where we've got 100% in Cisco, that should be the same as the value for Cisco, which it is. So we've got some confidence that this is being calculated correctly. So next we move on to the portfolio expected return. And this is simply a weighted average of the returns of the individual assets. So in other words, it's the weight of the first multiplied by the return. And they're going to lock that cell plus the weight of the second multiplied by this value lot. And so we have our value, which we can take all the way down. And again, we're going to sanity check this. So this should be the same as the value for Pfizer, which it is, and this one for Cisco, which it is. So this will now become a lot clearer if we plot these values on a chart. So let's just insert appropriate chart here. 
and this probably looks familiar because it's the minimum variance frontier. So from scratch, from price data, we've now managed to construct this in Excel. Probably worth adding on some axis titles here. So this is the standard deviation of daily returns, and this is the expected daily return. And this, of course, is our minimum variance frontier. Now, in the next episode, we're going to build on this and calculate a couple of key points on this frontier. The first of those will be the point with the lowest risk on the left hand side here, which, if you remember, is called the global minimum variance portfolio. And then going up from that, we have the efficient frontier and we'll also calculate the optimal portfolio construction to maximize that return over risk ratio. So that will form the basis of episode 25. And then in the following episode, we'll take this even further and calculate the blended portfolio using a risk-free asset. And this, of course, will use the capital allocation line that we've looked at previously. Okay, so we've made a really good start there. If you've got value from today, then do give me a thumbs up. But now until next time, trade safe.